If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. A little bit of everything. We Mind had a, Pump. We had a good time. It's not a qua and it's not a random episode. We actually talked about fitness in this one. For the first 35 minutes, though, we talked about nicknames and how guys like to give each other terrible, terrible nicknames. Yeah. We talk about Adam's testosterone. Proving grounds. We talk about Justin's testosterone and my testosterone. Yikes! We got our Everly Well testosterone tests back, and so we revealed what those numbers were. Got some work to do. Uh, We actually got a hookup for you also. Also, if you want to get your hormones tested, they have food intolerance testing. They have a lot of different tests you could do at home without a doctor. You go to everlywell.com, enter the code MINDPUMP, you will get 15% off any test. We also mentioned the Juve red lights because that also has been shown to improve hormone profile in men and women. If you go to Juve, J-O-O-V-V.com forward slash mind pump, you will also get a massive discount. We also talked a lot about uh, the fitness truths that there are in fitness, but also when it's okay to break those truths. Ooh, I love being a rebel. Yeah, so, you know, for example, like we talked about like compound lifts before isolation lifts. Usually true. Sometimes you got to break it. Sometimes. What about form? Should I always be controlled or is it sometimes go fast and loose? We talk about a lot of these types of rules and when it's okay to break them and when it may actually be beneficial to break those rules. Also, I would like to mention this month, all month long, you can get Maps Anywhere for half off. Now, Maps Anywhere is the program that is designed without fitness equipment. All you need is bands and a stick. That's it. You can do it anywhere. You can Mm -hmm. build an incredible body with Maps Anywhere without a membership to a gym. All over the world. But we also have multiple Maps programs, like our new bodybuilder program, Maps Split. We have Maps Anabolic, which is great for beginner to moderate people trying to build muscle mass and strength. We have Maps Aesthetic, which is also a bodybuilder-focused program. Maps Performance, which is for athletes. And then we have bundles where we take different Maps programs and combine them for particular goals and discount them like 30% off. For example, our Super Bundle is a year of exercise programming all planned out for you. You can find all of these programs at mindpumpmedia.com. Everyone's doing their homework on our interviews that are coming up this, this week. And uh, I think Justin's extra excited because one of the hosts that we're interviewing does uh, these little intro singing. Yes. So I know. Have you have you thought about what you're going to come with or what? I don't know. Are like, you going to surprise him? Well, that's the thing. Like if if we're interviewing and we're doing that, like I feel like I should include him. So maybe maybe a song that's like familiar, you know, that we can kind of harmonize and set the tone. All right. of us. Yeah. Do something from Simon and Garfunkel. I feel like that'll be a... Simon and Garfunkel? <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. Oh, my God. You could still make, come with... The- <laughs> well, you don't know who Simon and Garfunkel is? <laughs> no, I know who they are. Do okay. I know any of their songs, their lyrics? Well, Absolutely not. That one. Yeah, when somebody else sings it, yeah. I recognize, but I don't. Yeah. I would never be able to just You know start who listened that. to Simon and Garfunkel? My mom, when she uh, would clean the house yeah. all the time. Dude, you know what? Like, Hall, I, Hall and Oates... Those guys are bad motherfuckers. Yeah. 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 Like, I, I totally didn't give them... Like, what was that one song? Maneater. She's a man-eater. I forgot the words, though. Yeah. All I know is that yeah, part. I know. She's a man-eater. That's true. That's uh, all I know, too. Look out, boys. She'll look out, chew boys. You up. She'll chew you yeah, up. Whoa, oh, here she comes. Here she comes. She's a man-eater. I kind of... If, if a guy came up to me, let's say I was single, and I'm like, Damn, that girl's hot over there. And then some guy comes over and he goes, listen, bro. Yeah. Uh, she's a man eater. I'd be like, give me her number yeah, now. Like, chow down. Right this second, I want to call her. <laughs> because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a man eater. I'm looking for a man um, eating woman. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wow. You know what's, you know what's, I was just thinking about this <laughs> the other day. Probably the biggest difference between men and women is uh, the way we give each other nicknames. I can't think of anything that's more of a different... And, and the way that do girls even do we do sound really? effects. Well, no, girl, girls give each other like cute nicknames. Like here, I'll give you guys a story. Here's mm. a story that if you're listening right now, guy, girl, you know for sure only a guy would do this. So I go to my buddy's restaurant. He's actually the, one of the owners of the Opa's uh, Opa's Greek restaurants around here. So when they first open up, right? So I show up to my friend Spiro. Great guy, love him, love him to death. 
I used to train him and his brother, his brother George, before he passed away, but good people. So I show up to the restaurant, and he's taking me around, and he's like, he's a stereotypical, you know, Greek dude, which is very similar to a stereotypical Italian dude. Like, hey, what's going on? What you doing, man? So we're walking around, and he goes, this is my friend, this is John, he works in the back, this is Sarah, she's the front desk, you know, she works at the, the hostess, and she's in, he's introducing me to everybody, and he goes, and this is, you know, he's saying all the names, he goes, and this is our, my cook, Nine, and he's going through, and I'm like, Nine? I'm like, you don't look German. I thought, you know, because nine's a German word. Right, right. I'm like, why? He's like, oh, that's not his real name. His real name is something else. I'm like, well, why do they call you nine? He goes, nine, show them why they call you nine. He lifts up his hands and one finger's missing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how, a typical guy. Yes. Yeah. And and the best part about that is is nine appreciates yeah. a nickname like that. It's like the kid growing up with a big ass head. We call him head. <laughs> yeah, big head, <laughs> big head. I was nicknamed Quarter uh, in high school. That's was that all my friends call me Quarter. What? Because I'm Quarter Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> and, was, I, and it's, I love it. Oh yeah, it was whatever. That was my that was my nickname. God damn yeah, it, man! I was Ghost for a minute. You know, Were you cause, really? Yeah, because of my white ass skin. Yeah, yeah, I was Ghost. Yeah, girls don't really do that. No, no girls really. don't make fun of each other. I, like now that. I know my girl had nickname. My girl did. I don't know what hers was in high school, but because she played sports, so if you were an athlete, you did have some some athletes. If you were, but a it's female, always something good. You know what I mean? Like typically, we I call think. her Speed because she's fast. Like <laughs> yeah. guys aren't gonna do that. Speed. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Dude, I'm not. Gonna, I, I, I can't even you, come up with an example. You officially are the worst nickname giver, though, out of all of us. Oh, yeah. T Dog. T Dog. You know what yeah, though? Yeah. Hold on a second. Like Dizzle. It's stuck. Yeah. It's only because you made it stick. No, yeah. it's stuck. Because you have it... the power to talk to 50,000 people on no, a podcast where it... poor Taylor, <laughs> he's been trying to convince the 10 people he knows. <laughs> it's it's stuck because it was so oh, terrible. That's yeah. what makes it so good. You know what I mean? No, yeah. don't try and spit it. It's a terrible thing. Because he hates it, we still say it. Yeah, yeah that's really exactly. all that's left. That's, and yeah. that's the thing. If, if you're a dude, I'm trying to get, all, I'm trying to get you guys to switch it to TaylorMade. TaylorMade's cool. It's he's, too cool. It's not. He likes it. No, it's okay to have a cool. He's cool. We got to keep him cool. We don't want to yeah, make yeah, him a yeah. dork. No, no, he is. He's cool, but I don't. You know what I mean? That's like, you, if I like someone. If I don't like, if I gotta know you, I'll give you a nice nickname. I was calling him T Pain for a minute. Yeah, <laughs> or T Bag or something like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like if I, if I, <laughs> these are terrible. Tea once I know you really well, you're the better, worst of sisters like, ever. Yeah. Like for sure, I will never give either one of you guys a cool nickname because I know you guys too well. I'm gonna have to make fun of you. Like you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I have to say something that's terrible. Mm. That because that's what guys do, and yeah. I, that's what women don't do. That's like a big difference between us, dude. I don't know what we did, but I think we, I think we, it's backfired on us now to the size we're at now because I, can, I get at least ten to fifteen DMs a day of people talking shit to me. Dude, uh, I know, <laughs> just because we <laughs> yeah. talk so much shit to each other, yeah. we've humanized ourselves so much. Do you really? Yeah, absolutely. You know, nobody messages yeah, me to, do, to talk shit. Yeah, yeah. That people really? always oh, yeah. they make memes. <laughs> I've had people make memes of yeah. him. Uh, yeah, it's sure. like open season on us. Yeah. yeah. To okay, the point though. that I, I, I sometimes I don't know, like, is this person just playing with me right now? Are you really trying to fuck with me? Right now? <laughs> like, are you fucking with me right now? Yeah, or are you yeah, just, yeah. just having fun right now? No, 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 no. Yeah. We, had a, we had this kid in high school who had a, <laughs> a speech impediment. And, uh, oh, you know, it, but he was a cool kid. And so his nickname was Mumbles. That was his nickname. Yeah. yeah. And he, I mean, he literally mumbled. He taught, and it was, a, it was an actual problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, he appreciated it. Yeah, I was I like think. good friends. I Maybe. feel terrible about this now, but like I was good friends with this kid who, who like he had to wear like hearing aids and everything. And so I, I figured out that he sat in front of me that when I put my hand next to his ear, it would be like, Beep. and so <laughs> like I, I would do like jingle bells, like in the middle of the class, beep, 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 you know? <laughs> <laughs> the whole really time, do? and everybody could hear it, but him, you know. Oh, what an asshole! Everybody's laughing. <laughs> That's pretty funny fucking though. dick. Yep, That's pretty yep, funny yep, though. Yep, yep. Yep. <laughs> meep, meep, meep. You know, <laughs> you guys were bad friends. Why do you think we do bad that? Friends, Why dude. do you think guys do that to each other? Well, we and, talked about this, didn't we? Talk about this. It's just, it's, we did, and people have speculated to see how resilient you are as I a think male. So. Right? Like if you, you're testing someone to see right, how they if can I, handle. If I, if I can make fun of your name, or I can make fun of something about you, like a small attribute about you, and it makes you fold and crumble. We are not going hunting together. No, nah, we're not going to hunt for bears or do no. anything crazy where I'm going to have to rely nah, on you to give it a feeling because you're for soft. sure that is a lot scarier than the fucking nickname that I just gave you. Yeah. So if you fold over that and you're a pussy, right. for sure when we get out into war or get out into like something like that that's trivial at all, you're fucking out. It's so true. Yeah, you're I would think it's almost like it's a natural true. thing of evolution, which is unfortunate because now we have this. 
you know, uh, the and I know it's good, so I know it's going to piss somebody off. Like the the anti bullying campaigns. Like, oh that, sure, that sure. Are going no, on, there's right? there's real. There's definitely bullying. Yes, that, that there's I'm, a difference. Yeah, with, <laughs> if if it's like you know tongue in cheek or like you know like you're just trying to rouse them up, you know, versus like actually trying to be like put somebody down. Right. right? Of course, of yeah. course. What but, a hard situation though to be in as a as a teacher or a leader within that at, right at this you're time, right. at this time right now. You're right? right. Like how do I? How do you decipher? Yeah, yeah. Right. How do I? How do I allow the kids to have some flexibility? and like you know friends playing with each other and teasing this and that or versus like hey that's bullying it's like because then at what point how do you where do you draw that line what's teasing what's bullying and what's healthy and what's not healthy right. mm-hmm. and, and being included or excluded you know it's like some kids like they just don't want to hang out with you sorry you know like this is something that like my my oldest is dealing with too like this kid that just he just, he just doesn't like hanging out with him I'm like that's okay you know but it's become a thing where the kid really wants to hang out with him and like pesters him all the time and um is disruptive and so it's like it's it's tough because you know you empathize and you want you want everybody to get along but guess what we're human beings and yep. not everybody's gonna get along and there's something to be said That's about have different states right yeah, and there and there's something to be said about like ma- forcing kids to do shit that you would never want to be forced to do yourself and what i mean by that is like 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 what you just said don't force me to hang out with someone just out if i don't want to like i'm not going to be mean to somebody but if someone calls me up wants right. to hang out i don't want to hang out with them i'm not going to the other thing is sharing that's a big one. A lot of parents will force their kids to yes, share, force yes. them. Instead, I give my kids the option. I'll be like, look, it is yours. You don't have to share, mm-hmm. but just keep in mind that you're they're probably not going to want to share and back you with you. you see them do it on their own, like, yes. which is great. It doesn't count if you force them. No. It's like forcing your kid to say they're sorry. Yeah. It doesn't really count, right. you know what I mean, when you force them to do that. But it is funny. I'll tell you what, being as, as a guy, if you're hanging out with a group of men and they start talking shit to you and, and, and calling you nicknames and laughing, you know that you've been accepted yeah. into the group. It's true. Totally. And it's funny because I know us, especially when we first started Mind Pump, we would just talk shit to each other the entire time. Oh, yeah. And it was so fun. Yeah. Yeah. And afterwards, I was like, I love those guys. <laughs> I know. They just call me a nerd. I'm like, you know oh, I'm man, I'm, I'm the fat guy in this group. This is great. <laughs> you know? Like, I've never been the fat Have guy Have I done before. that many fat guy jokes? I've never you? been the fat the guy until I've, I've hung out with you guys. This is a new experience for me. <laughs> Adam likes to it dig. is. Adam likes to dig on that. I was, I was always like the, the buff guy that was like the athlete. The now, now I'm the fucking fat guy. You know? <laughs> like, it just happened. Well, that's what happens when you partner up with two ectomorphs. Or fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you guys like, like you can't even fucking gain weight in the midsection. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, fuck yeah, you guys. Yeah. So, I can. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying right now. We'll yeah. see what happens. I'm trying. I'm trying real hard. Yeah, they're, they're not. Yeah, I'm a little bit. My gut health. No, good. I'm on. I'm, I'm on. I'm on the gain myself. Are you really? Well, yeah. Hence the the drinking shakes again. Like, don't I, let me catch been, up to you, bro. You can't do so, that. It's been so long. Yeah. You're low and I'm high, so theoretically I could get close. Yeah. No. I, you. You could, but I don't think so, though. I won't. I'm not gonna let myself. You know why? I'll feel uncomfortable. I, I'm almost. I'm about 200 pounds. I haven't been 200 pounds no, in you're, you're a long time. Pretty, looking you know, pretty jacked right you now. You know what's dude. interesting is even along this this uh, you know journey towards the Ryan Gosling body that I've been going for. Uh, Wait, I'm, are you trying to look like him, or are you trying yeah. to go f- for a guy with a body like that? You got to be clear. <laughs> yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> trying to look like him. Right? Okay. Okay. No, but I. Uh, you know, we talked. We I, we talked recently about like set points and stuff like that. And. Man, even with the, the the lack of movement, the low calories, everything that I've been doing, um, you know, my body still is maintaining around like two hundred and eight, two hundred and ten pounds. Yeah. You know, it's I've, very different from when you were. Oh, very, very 18, different. 19. Oh no, I mean, even in my twenties, I mean, till twenty five, I spent most of twenty to twenty five trying to break the two hundred mark. That was a that was a big deal for me to break over that. I so. wonder if it's just the the length of exposure to testosterone, or if it's just you've had the weight on for long enough. To I wear. think it's more going what we talked about, and I, obviously I'm. I know someone's gonna laugh because I'm comparing myself to Ben Pakulski, and by no means am I anything like that fucking freak of yeah, nature. His leg, his but, leg weighed about two hundred. Right, right. But I mean, we 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 talked about we've speculated that you know. Um, What's it? Hyperplasia, right? That happens. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Muscle fibers, you create more of them. Right. So, I mean, I've been training for quite some time now. And for sure, when I was competing with testosterone, too, I mean, man, the level of volume that I did for It's true. I probably it's have true. definitely, and I, and it feels like it to me because what I noticed now is like I could, I've, you know, after the injury, I kind of fell off for about a month and a month and a half or so. And then even the rehab process is really slow. I really have just recently started to get a little bit of my consistency and momentum and like better training sessions, higher volume. 
And man, my body is just, I mean, it's it, bouncing. Quick. Yeah. Where it gets back to right now is, I mean, that just 10 years ago, that would t- have taken me a year of consist- mm-hmm. consistency of dieting and training just to build the frame that I have right now. So there's something to be said about just, you know, plugging away for years and being Bro, consistent. It's so true because oh, it's yeah. funny. I, I put po- like, was it like two weeks ago? I posted a picture um, and I was pointing to uh, one of our free hit guides and it was a shirtless picture and I'm kind of flexing from the side because I know my angles. So I know I know how to make kind myself of. look better. You know, somebody DM me about that, like teasing you. And I was like, dude. What'd they the f- say? Well, oh. they're just they're just making fun of you. And I go, Why, you know. Why, I'm flexing? Well, yeah, whatever. I want to hear what they said, Adam. Tell well, me. no, it was so something. I'm trying to save my feelings. <laughs> no, 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 I, absolutely not. I was, uh, <laughs> but I mean, I, again, like I think some people just don't realize. I'm sure you guys get the same thing too. It was like. Sal's very aware that that's his angle. He makes fun of, oh, yeah, makes yeah, fun yeah, of it. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, because that's they're just teasing, like, oh, his famous shot. You know, it was, it was a fan. It was a playful. It wasn't anything like that. But it's funny that they send to me. But it's about you. But it's like, you know, Sal knows that. You oh, know what I'm saying? Course, Sal yeah. knows that. Says that. Jokes about it. Last but it's like when someone tries to like, if we're to try and text me or message me, everybody about has a side. Your calves you know or I mean? something like yeah, that. It's just yeah, like yeah. it's just you just are aware of yeah, yeah what looks good yeah. and what you know. I'm that's, narrow. That's I'm narrow, but I have thickness. So if I pose sideways, you can't tell I'm narrow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I've been practicing for. Yeah. But anyway, so I post that picture, and someone and people are messaging me like, "Dude, how long did it take to like look like that or whatever?" And I'm like, honestly. Uh, 25 years. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've been literally, I've been training consistently, consistently now since I was 14 years old with weight training just to, sh- and that's a, it, I am a perfect example of really bad muscle building genetics because it took me that long to get to the point now where if I work out, I have okay, decent muscularity, but let's say I had never worked out and I started working out now at my age, I would never be able to, to achieve what I, what I have. It's because I have all those years of training. For sure, I've, I've accomplished hyperplasia. For sure, right. Twenty five years of exposure to yeah. consistent so that, resistance training. Personally, that's what that's what I think it is for me. Mm-hmm. And then and then even uh, for sure in my in my legs, which is why I think I've been able to jump uh, a, a, quite a bit of weight from being somebody who would fall back down to one hundred and eighty. Oh, now your legs hold mass. Yeah, my yeah. legs definitely, and then they and they respond much quicker than what they used yeah. to, which is again so nuts to me. Yep. That this was a muscle group that I struggled with for so many years in my life. Like not I just anymore. no, it's not like it's. But I, it, I mean, I remember, and this was really when you and I first met and first started talking. <clears throat> it was kind of like one of the last things I applied, even though I knew it, the information. I still had fall, fallen into the old bodybuilder kind of dogma of this hammering one body part a day type of deal. And I never, and I, you know why I never applied it to legs? Cause I remember how miserable one day of legs was. I'm like, fuck you do three days a week yeah, legs. Forget it. That just sounds, you know, maybe in the, my prime, I was doing two times at most, mm-hmm. but I was still hammering and I was miserable and I was walking around sore for days. Once I learned to back off the intensity, bring the volume down a little bit and then spread it out throughout the week. Oh dude, yep, legs yep. just totally responded. Yep, yep, and yep. now it's easier for me to maintain mass on them and they respond yep. really quick. What do you weigh right now? 210? Yeah, I'm 210 right now. You'll probably, just from looking at you, because your body's changed so dramatically over the last couple months just because your, your hormone level's coming back, you're able to be active. I would assume at 210 is probably a good, or 215, 210 to 215 is probably a good lean natural body weight for you, right? Where you're going to, you'll keep losing body fat, keep putting muscle on so the yeah, scale may stay the same. My, my guess, like, so right now, and I haven't- And this been, is natural. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking, right? 210, 215? So it's going to be interesting because, one, I haven't been 100% natural in a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, it's been, uh, shit, it's been five years since mm-hmm. I've been 100% natural. Uh, and, and I'm still, and I'm definitely on the lower end of the normal. Like, uh, I got my Everly well test. I haven't shared That's that right. with the mm. audience. So you were borderline. Yeah. I was right on, I was right on the low end, which, which, which I'm going to tell you, dude, is exciting. It is. Cause you went from, think about it. We got to put this in context. Now you went years of relatively consistent, uh, exogenous, you know, testosterone. Yeah, I went use. two. I went. I mean, just to be very clear, so people know what, what it looked like. I went two years of a therapeutic type of dose. So when I got tested for my um, my test levels, God, this is when I was thirty. I'm thirty six now, going on thirty seven. So when I was thirty, I got tested back then when I knew something was kind of off, and I was in a and I was in the lower, uh, real real low. I think it was two hundred and something free test, <clears throat> and so then I got on a therapeutic dose for about two years consistently. Um, and then that's when I got into competing. So a lot of people don't know this, but I, those that have been following for a long time that have seen like my 
before and after transformation before I got into com- uh, competing and I was 20% body fat. I looked terrible. I was on hormones. You know, I was taking testosterone. I was taking a therapeutic dose. And then when you see my first initial transformation from fat to fit where I got down sub uh, 7% body fat, that was still on the same therapeutic dose. You're still dose. taking the replacement dose. Yeah, still taking the replacement dose. I did that all the way into the amateur level. When I then went into right after I won USA or uh, went pro in USA's, that's when I started to bump the, when I was becoming a pro. When I became a pro, I upped my dose, a dose to like 250 to 300 milligrams a week, and, and I peaked at 500 milligrams on my- But on even a therapeutic <laughs> dose will shut down your body's natural testosterone. So basically, your body hasn't been producing testosterone or didn't for like five years. Then you go off, and you just recently did your Everly Well testosterone test, yeah. and you're- you're not where you want to be, but right. you're in the range of what they would consider normal, right? I'm, which I'm, is good news. I'm in a range where some doctors would not give me a therapeutic right. dose of testosterone. They would say you're the, fine the, and try. Now and- the question is for me is I wonder, a is it possible to get it back to where it would have been had you never used it, uh, uh, anabolics? That's a big question. And B, this is something that I've pondered for a long time. I wonder if being on so, Because when you're on testosterone, especially when you take the super physiological doses, right, you're taking hundred, you know, 10 times or 100 times more testosterone than your body's taking. And I wonder if that will uh, change your receptor density for testosterone so that when you go off, those you'll, and your lower testosterone level, as your testosterone levels start to go up, maybe you'll respond better to them. Hmm. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's 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 an interesting question. I don't know, but the thing hmm. that I noticed more than anything else that it w- has been the greatest challenge because it's now been <clears throat> let's see here December. So what are we in right now? Month six right now. Mm-hmm. So it's been seven months that I have been off testosterone completely. So and I tell you, the hardest part of the low testosterone is the to muster the the energy to want to lift mm-hmm. because not only do I just don't have that anabolic drive to want to train but then i also am extremely weak in comparison to what i'm used to also so it's like a double mental fuck at the same time so that's been more challenging than anything and then just being able to be really consistent with it to see if how much that's going to mm-hmm. help i also was really consistent with the juve light and then our uh, infrared sauna for quite some time and then i actually intentionally kind of have taken a break from it right before i did the everly well test because um, I don't know if I told you guys this or not, but I think it's Mike Mike Mensel or Mike not Mike Mensel. Oh, Mike Mensel is no, no, no. It's not. It's Mike. I forget. Metabolic Mike. And oh, he, yeah. He interviewed us. He's got a YouTube I channel. Like I really like Mike, and he's. A, I know he's a, a, an avid listener. He had shared with me. He did the test right before he got on a, a protocol with the Juve Light, and he it was, is Mutzel. Is it muscle? Yeah. Okay, I was right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he he was, uh, shout out to Mikey, Metabolic Mike. He's got a great page. So you got, and he puts out really good content for those of you guys that haven't seen Mike's uh, content on YouTube and on his Instagram. But uh, he sent me this and he showed me that I think he was at uh, uh, 400 uh, where was where his free test was before. Then he went on like a protocol of Juve and he said he really kept everything else the same diet regimen. Everything else was normal. And he was doing 15 to 20 minutes of the juve either every other day or three times a week. I forgot what he what he texted me. And then he showed me his lab results afterwards. And he was 750, dude. Yeah. So he huge, almost double. People don't realize how much so I'm really, certain things can affect so, testosterone. And, I, and because I told you that I was consistent with it, then I would then I kind of then I purpose intentionally stopped kind of doing it for a while. You're gonna do it again? Yeah, I, yes. Now I'm gonna do it again yeah. consistently with my ramping up my training. So combine the two of them together. So what I'm gonna do I, something. I, so- I, I believe if there's anything that's gonna get me higher, it's gonna be that. So something I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do something very similar because you guys know I, I go on and off keto, but usually largely keto-ish with my diet because of my gut. Mm. Well, my gut health has been very good, so I've been throwing in starches, more and more starches because it feels good and, and my body's reacting well. Mm-hmm. And I there is some evidence that long, long, long-term low, super low carbohydrate diets may negatively affect anabolic hormones. Yeah. So, so yes. I want to, I want to do another test to see if my testosterone. See, and this is what I've, I've been going through this because of the fact that I know the environment has shifted to where we're sitting more and like, I'm getting less activity. I used to train and be on my feet and pick stuff up and like constantly do stuff. And so I've, you know, changed my diet to where I don't really eat 
I mean, I, consistently, I won't eat till like eight o'clock, or you know, or, or I'll eat like midday. But I, mm-hmm. like, I'm just always like more in. Um, you know, in like a fasted state, like and have that window of like eight mm-hmm. hours. But like, I need to change it up, man. So, I need to do. I need to start adding more food and then getting you know that hard, intense training back. So really interesting that you're doing that because this is something that I was kind of. I thought the same thing was going on with me because I've been more keto for. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't. I hate saying keto because I'm not fully ketogenic, but just really low carbohydrate. Yes, more, I've been very fat. low, in, especially in comparison to how I was eating before. And one of the things that I've noticed in the last week and a half, two weeks, is I've reintroduced more carbohydrates. And I've really just used white rice. White rice has now made its way back into my diet. Easy to digest. Yeah, it's yeah. very easy on me. I like it. Um, and I've started to incorporate like a cup to two cups a day now that I wasn't having before. And my workouts are, are yep. feeling really yep. good right now. And I'm wondering if there's something there that, you know, maybe the the high fat, low carbohydrate diet for me, as well as it, it helped mitigate putting on bad weight and I felt healthy as far as inflammation, mm-hmm. things like that. But maybe, you know, there's something to be said about the the anabolic effect of it and how it was I affecting think my workouts. If you go too low fat, your car, your testosterone will be low. I think if you go if you, any anytime my belief is if you go if you take something out for too long, you may start to notice negative effects. Now, the science is a little murky on this, but there is some science that suggests that keto diets for long periods of time may, in fact, lower uh, anabolic hormones. Uh, now, does it change receptor density with androgens and maybe it makes up for that? I mean, I know when we had, what's his name on the show? Um, carnivore diet guy. What's his name? Sean, Sean Baker. Dr. Ba- you know, he got his testosterone levels checked and they were low as fuck. Mm-hmm. And he'd been on cardio for, for what, like a year and a half or two years. And he says he feels great and he feels great libido and all that stuff. So it's, it is interesting. I got my test results back and I was kind of right in the middle, right in the middle of the range that they give you for the, did you get yours back yet, Justin? Yeah, I did get it back, but it's, um, I, I, I literally haven't even been able to get it over it yet. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah. If you open it, I'll look at it right now. <laughs> Can you imagine? It said negative 45. No, like literally we just got, pregnant. my wife just picked it up from, from the post office. So I'm going to I'm gonna check it out. Bro, picked up it, what? It they emailed stri- it to you. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. They text message it to you. What? Why are you such an asshole? What are you talking about? You did this, you did this before me. I got it like a, like four days ago. I know. I don't sad, know. You know what's sad about this, Adam? What? Justin's the most tech, like, I know. tech of that's all. Why I did get the email. That's why I'm calling him an asshole. Like he's, the one is supposed to help if you, you if you pull up the email i'll do it for you All dude right. i'll show okay. you what it looks like oh fuck off i can figure it out <laughs> you're, you're gonna let the tech <laughs> retard help you out i can't believe <laughs> come on dude yeah <laughs> How, what are you weighing right now justin 220 220 yeah. you just walk around like a fucking weight i'm just always where do, where do you where do you where do you go i like flex your, between 230 to i mean two yeah 230 to 233 to 220 i'm like that's like my range i've gotten down to like 215 and that's that's what I'm lean. You, you just know? carry you carry so much in your. In what your, were you when you case? did that whole the did the I whole did. transformation on mind pump? Oh what yeah, that? yeah. What, it was what? like two, two ten, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I got I got down, and I felt skinny and fucking pathetic. You know. <laughs> really? really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you was, were still I, a beefcake. I fucking hated it, dude. I know everybody's. Have you ever- oh, you look good. I hated it. So that was just me. You know, like I just felt like I was. I, you could blow me like in the wind. I would just like crumble. You know what I mean? <laughs> to your, you know what? To your credit, you do comfortably walk around. You know, at two twenty. I mean, I've seen you, or even two thirty. I've seen you move. I've seen you work out. You, you don't move like you're. Like if I was two thirty, I'd be huge at two thirty. Even though you and I are the same height, right? And if you saw me move at two thirty, besides deadlifts and squats and bench press. You guys would laugh. It's it's well distributed across my body. That's my biggest fear right now of kind of ramping up the calories and trying to gain right now is that I've put so much work into my mobility that I don't want, you know, and that part of the reason why I haven't, I'm now putting it out there, right? I hadn't put this out there that I'm like trying to gain again right now because I didn't want to commit to it because if I started to notice that it started to hinder all this mobility that I've put so much effort into getting to where I'm at now, that that's still more of a priority to me that it's like... You know, I think if you train right and just let your see where your body goes, just see where it what it, what it kind of heads to. You know what I mean? I know. I have a feeling you'll you'll be a, naturally. I have a feeling you'll be around two ten, two fifteen lean. Which that's I, what's your body fat at two, now? Two fifteen. Uh, I'm I'm I definitely You're in the low teens. Oh yeah, I'm definitely low teens. Like I'm pro- 13, 12. Yeah, 30. I would I would guess I would guess between 
13, 14% right See, now. See, I feel like you at 210, 215 at like 8, 9% would probably be like a nice. Yeah. Well, nice think about work. that. That's a lot of extra. That, I mean. Yeah, but you're coming off of a, of a nasty layoff, you know what I mean? And you're just yeah, starting yeah. to get it back on. Yeah. It, it, to That's get, totally doable. If I, if, I'm, if I take my time to get to that that number, I think you're right. Uh, what tends to be easier is to kind of aggressively get up to 220, then come back down than it is to like really slowly yeah, take my yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I should, I know that a hundred percent. It's yeah. just, it's easier for me to make that mental switch of, okay, I'm on the game. That's the priority. Mm-hmm. Like make sure I'm consuming what I need to and lifting the way I need to. I just, we'll see. I have no idea where, where my, my body's at. I'm just really happy. The place I'm at right now, mobility wise, my, my back, my shoulders, like I mean, that was a big deal for me. Shit, we're all feeling healthy. That's dangerous. I don't know if you saw. Yeah, yeah I know, right? It is. That was a. Uh, it is dangerous if we all feel healthy. We, it's been a while since we've been all training really hard at the same time, mm-hmm. I and mean, we've mm-hmm. uh, since mind pump has happened. I mean, the beginning of it, I felt like <laughs> the business was so. One of slow. us was doing some at some at any moment. One of us was dealing with some shit. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, I know, right? There was always yeah. some something happening that was like crazy. Yeah, yeah. But That's, I feel like everybody's good right now, huh? Yeah, no. I mean, for me, it's my gut health, bro. It's like the 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 monthly fast has slowly but surely, like, and I don't want to use the word heal because I'm not trying to count all my chickens, but it has made such a huge difference where I feel like I'm assimilating my fucking food, you know what I mean? Whereas before I had to manage everything so carefully because it would throw me off that now I can eat something and digest it and assimilate it. Whereas before it was like, be very careful what I ate, and if I ate something that was off, then my gut was off, and I could feel I'd get depleted, or I it, almost like your body's not absorbing things. You're, you've got this kind of constant state of inflammation. Yeah, you know. So, and my workouts are totally, I mean, just way different. You it's, know, I feel like awesome. you guys have been really bad friends lately, man. I'm going to tell you that. What? Yeah, I just feel Come like on, man. I couldn't believe that you guys didn't even reach out to me and say anything about my latest post because that was such a big feat for me. I mean, that's like Sal jumping a four foot vertical. I mean, that's a big fucking deal. <laughs> for, yeah, I mean, motherfucker, you know how much I've worked to get to that oh, point. Your right overhead there? squat. Yeah, dude. Oh yeah, that looked amazing. Yeah, dude. Oh that's, yeah. I've never been able to do that ever. Yeah, that's really ever, good. Ever, ever. Yeah, I've never seen you do that. So I guess I was just like curious. I was watching it and I was like, oh, wow. That's yeah, I can't fuck. I've that. never, have you been able to do that? I can't do that. You're, you're, I hope you're not looking at me. Yeah. Can no. I do it? <laughs> yeah, no, I know you can. Yeah. I mean, that's Justin. That takes the it's, depth. It, oh, that. that's gnarly, especially like to be able to control that and then keep it, everything well, braced in your I'm, lower I'm, back. I'm impressed with your shoulder mobility because I know mm. that was your limiting factor forever. Yeah. You know, the ability to hold. No, oh, my shoulders, my hips, my ankle, all of them were limiting how, factors. How long did you have to prime and stuff before you were able to? To pull that off uh that day yeah so i mean I'm were you pretty- just practicing with the same movement with the bar and going heavier no heavier? no i i actually that was my first real attempt at it and the only reason why i attempted it because i felt like man i feel really i haven't felt this good in uh that deep of a squat ever and i just i was like you know what i, I hadn't attempted that in a long time the last time i attempted that it was remember when we were all together with uh mike slemmy and on it yeah mm-hmm. and remember when he had us hold the the 45 pound plate over or the 10 pound plate i think it was it was a really light weight over <clears throat> over our head and then squat down oh yeah oh i mean i was shaking like a like a true i mean it was so bad like a shitting dog yeah and i couldn't get all the way down oh, wow. i couldn't mine's low sorry i just finally pulled it up is it low yeah let me see let me, let me read it for you. Is it low, as low as mine? Uh, it's like 57 or something. Oh, shit. You guys are borderline. Yeah. Wow, you're as low as me? Wow. Yeah. Wow. I don't feel so what bad. What a waste. You should have taken steroids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need get more sleep and take it again. Yeah. Wow, yeah. dude. Wow. That. That's interesting that you're down there with that me. That's interesting. Damn. Wow. Yeah. I Look at that. Step my shit up. No, you know, it's not a... It, it's. It's all about how you feel. Too. I think that you said you were. Let me see where you're at. You were at 57. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let me see. Since we're talking about this, I'm actually really interested to see. I know I took a picture or a screenshot, and I will for those that are listening, so you don't feel like you're left out here in my Insta story. I will put that up there so you guys yeah, can see that. what the fuck we're talking about. So what we're talking about, if you don't know, so if we you don't know, Everly Well was a company that uh, we did advertising for for a few episodes, and we all did the. Hormone test, tests. Yeah, 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 to test our testosterone levels, and I was really interested to see where mine was going to land. And why am I not? Why can't I find it right now? Mm. You were at fifty something. I also. was. That's yeah. That's why I'm curious to see if mm. uh, Justin and I are. See, and I knew like yeah, all the excuses that come to mind. Is that you know, why as you, far as, you've like, been sleep? Was, I didn't. 
Uh, yeah, I was on. Is that why you guys turned down my advance, my stuff. advances and stuff? You're just not feeling. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, I wasn't up for You're it. You're not feeling hot. I wasn't up for it. So yeah. mine, mine was at one twelve. So I was, which is kind of in wow. the middle. Yeah. So fifty seven one twelve. Yeah. I, th- I could have sworn yours was at. I want to do it 54, again. 54, 57, it too. It gets me competitive for some weird <laughs> reason. <laughs> competitive? Like, yeah. like, it's you can, like it's something you can win at. Like, yeah. you, you know what? I'm not going to lie. I was disappointed with mine, but now yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck you. Because I'm first place. I'm going to start punching things again. Hey, Doug, make sure you know why? Because so I stopped doing Muay Thai. I was 58. What was Justin? 57. 57. Yeah, you beat me. Oh, wow. shit. Yeah. Wow. Wow. God, you totally lost. See? See? Yeah. Wow, last, last, imagine last, me on steroids. In last place. Yeah. Let's yeah. name this episode Sal got first, Doug. Make sure you write that down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the oldest too, huh? Uh, Old that's man. actually cool though. That gives you something to kind of work towards. Though. I, I mean, because that's kind of how I'm treating I it right now. I can guarantee you I know what the problem was with yours, Justin, because you yeah. literally said when you took the test, I haven't been getting any good no, sleep. No sleep. And you did look shitty. I did. Thank, yeah, you did well, look like... Thank you. Because right now, <laughs> if you got your testosterone levels checked, you look more. You look much more rested. More vibrant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. for sure. I was in low sleep and like uh, for some reason stressed out at the time. But yeah, whatever. That all affects it, dude. It I, I really want... It. Now that I took it the way I did... You know what we're going to do? We're going to... Let's do this. We'll take another test mm. and let's all go on a testosterone protocol. I'll put together all the supplements. We'll get the Four Sigmatic mm. together. I'll get us together yeah. with the organic. Well, let's stuff. go. I'm on well, it you know already. What? I'm you, on the train. You need to give me the juve light now. You know what I mean? Like pass, pass the love. Well, the only problem with that is, is I have low test and I have psoriasis, so I get the trump there. Oh, I win. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. you, man. Yeah. yeah, you need another. You need a skin disease first. Well, oh, maybe I'll get them. Give my own pass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I need to add on the skin. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. A, you, it's not supposed to sunburn you, but I, I feel still like have hair will. though. So yeah. you know what I mean. I'm winning there. Only, only just so we get tan from a juve light. I would. I'd be like a red glow. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be red reflecting red. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know it's funny because I was I was in our spa in the infrared spa, and like after I was done, I felt like I was a little bit red. You know, like it just, just like warm like yeah, the yeah, heat, the core temperature, but it looked like I got a little bit of sunburn. It's just from the heat. Yeah, you know what I mean. No. Anyway, you know, Doug wanted us to to do an episode. I know he gets, goes crazy when we do these random ones. Oh, you yeah. know what? I do have a topic. Let's just talk about biceps. I you do know, have like, no, no, no. I have yeah. a good topic because okay. uh, there, you know, there there are general rules and fitness that we talk about all the time but there are times when it's okay to break them and actually Ooh. might be when is that okay it might be a good thing to break them sometimes yes. so i'll give you guys an example one that most trainers and fitness enthusiasts believe to be true 100 percent of the time and that is when you start your workout you start with the compound heavy movements first and you finish with the isolation movements that's just this is common knowledge right like if you're hitting chest you start with your bench press and your incline press, and then little by little you move down. And the See, last now, exercise, I, the here. reason why I don't like you using that as an example is because I actually disagree. I don't think that's as common as you think it is. The only people that I catch that do that are people that understand programming or Olympic powerlifters, strength trainers, like people that like really understand programming. Do that. Everybody else gravitates to machines first. Almost everybody I know goes to a machine first to warm up well, and do well, basic, these. Ba- I rarely ever see someone go straight to the squat rack or the deadlift. Well, sp- you know, it's, tr- I guess uh, generally speaking, it is true that you should start with the compound movements, right? Right. But there is a time with good programming. So forget the people that know anything about exercise, right? The, the people that just do whatever. I'm talking about for people who actually understand exercise programming. There is a time and a place where you will benefit from going isolation first. Mm-hmm. In fact, in fact. We wrote some of that in Map Split. We actually, sh- in phase three, in fact, we do have a lot of that where you start off with an isolation movement first. Well, yeah. If, and if you're not getting a certain muscle group to fire properly or like be engaged in the movement, that's where we want to dive into why, you know, like let's let's figure out where the disconnect is and like let's really try to get that involved in, you know, these, these multi-joint. That's lifts. how I learned uh, the first concept or understanding i have of of i had of priming yeah. in my career was maybe 10 10 12 years ago where i didn't understand what priming was but i did understand that i have a client who never feels her butt when she squats or i have a dude that never feels his lats when he does a a, a back exercise so what i would do with them is i would do an isolation movement first get that muscle kind of pumped and then go to the compound movement and boom they'd be yeah. like oh shit now i feel my lats I remember doing that for the first time myself when I was a kid. The first time I ever got a lat pump, which, by the way, for, for 
it, the first time you feel a pump in your back oh, yeah. is amazing because it's, it's such difficult a, for many people to ever feel their yep. back. And yeah. the first time I ever did it was I did pullovers. I did a whole bunch of pullovers and then I went and did pull-ups. And for the first time in my life, I felt this pump in my lats. From a correctional standpoint, it's it's important. But from a hypertrophy standpoint, dude, I mean, if all you ever do are compound movements first, switch it up. Mm-hmm. Go do your flies first, then do your presses, and, and watch what happens. The pump is just absolutely insane. No, I, I agree. That's a great one. Yeah. Another one that we, we talk about, because we talk so much about the overuse of intensity. Yes. That I think it's important that, because I know because of that, we, we've been labeled as team no sweat, and then sometimes I think that people feel like we're giving them... Like we don't actually do hard workouts. Right, that we're giving people the green light, too, to never train hard. Like, that's not the case whatsoever. I think the message of us coming out and talking about, you know, intensity was to tell people that a majority of people that are just getting started in their programming should probably pull back quite a bit on the intensity. Most people overdo it. Right. Mm -hmm. But there is definitely a place that, you know, where you, you should apply. And one of the strategies that I like to teach somebody like, well, how do you go? How do I know how much intensity or how do I know when to go beast mode or when to kind of do that? And I try and ease people in, for example, regardless if you're doing a split routine or a full body routine, you know, when you're working a muscle group, the the last set, that's all it takes. You know, the last set of that muscle Mm -hmm. group of that day, taking that to failure would be what I would do. Yep. Instead of what you see a lot of guys doing is, and girls, warming up and then going, I mean, each rep, they're, they're each set, they've got somebody spotting them mm-hmm. yeah. through the reps from the beginning of their workout all the way to the end. Right. And that, that, to me, is where you're going to see a lot of breakdown, and then you're mm-hmm. really just... Yeah, because if you start in the beginning with a bunch of sets to failure, you've ruined the rest of your workout. Right. It, it's typically what'll yeah. happen. It'll, it'll ruin the rest of your workout. You're not able to lift as heavy or have as much control. Right. And all Form ex- goes to shit, everything. Yep, and all exercises are not the same. Like, I could go to failure on bicep curls and tricep you know, extensions, and I can do that much more often than a set of squats to failure. In fact, when's the last time any of you guys did an actual, a real, not hard, but a real set to ultimate failure in barbell squats? Ago. Yeah. Do you it's remember what years. that was like? Yeah. It was horrible. It's it's terrible. Yeah, because then you, you you can't walk the next few days. I mean, no. it's. I mean, you can, but it's painful as fuck, mm-hmm. and it's hard to, to take shits. Everything, man. It's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's tough, man. Like it's, it hurts. Like it's sore. It's like it's it's beyond sore when you when you take um you know squats to that level. And uh, I remember vividly. I'd always have that spotter there, you know, to make sure I got through all these sets of like these heavy reps. And I don't use spotter at all. Anymore, mm. like there's no need to have a spot. For me, the right. last time I went like to real failure with barbell squats, and when I say real failure, it's because if you haven't gone till you can't do a full rep anymore on squats, it's actually failure is more reps than you think sometimes. And this was, I want to say, six or seven years ago, and I was competing with a friend of mine to see who could squat 315 the most. Mm-hmm. And so my goal was to be able to get 20 reps with with yeah. 315. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah. and I I and so I worked my way up to being able to do multiple sets of like 14 reps with the squats, but they were so hard. I was like I'm never going to be able to hit 20. Mm-hmm. Well, the day came where we were going to do the competition and I belted up and I got under the bar and I just it's like I got to 15, I got to 16, I'm like there's no way I can do another one. But I kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing. And I got to 20, I did 22 reps with 315, but that 20 second rep was uh, terrifying. It was actually, I couldn't see out of my eyeballs while I was doing it. Yeah, all the pressure. I was, I was pushing so hard and then I fell afterwards. I just laid down on the floor and almost puked. Yeah. And then the last time I went to failure on deadlifts besides maxing out, because that doesn't really count, right? Going one set, one rep. Oh, that's yeah. not really, that's easy. Yeah. I did, uh, I got 315 on the bar and I did 10 sets of 10 reps with 45 second rest in between. And the goal was to see if I can complete that. Wow. And uh, single-handedly caused myself to overtrain for like two weeks. Mm. It took me two weeks to recover from something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's horrible, But man. that was the one. That was, those are the two, the two last times I can remember really, really going. But other exercises, I'll go to failure sometimes, like isolation movements or movements that are a little easier, presses uh, overhead. We just, yeah, we just did it. I think it was 10 rep, like, so we would get up to, I think – it might have been 315 or a little bit more, but just like you would go one for one. So it was me and my friend. Oh, we would just go one. Okay, you go for 10. I go for 10. Oh, when it gets we were there for two hours, like just doing squats. 
and then just until we collapsed, basically. Mm. So that was fucked. You know, it's another one that we talk a lot of shit about that I think there's some value there also. But, and again, the reason why we talk a lot of shit about it is because I think it's it's utilized improperly and it's overused. And that is these creative, weird angle type of exercises. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm. And there's something to be said about having strength in these weird positions by, you know, like doing like a tricep extension with your elbow completely elevated and tweaked out to the side or doing something weird like that. You know, it seems like, and we've teased people for doing things like that because you see a lot of guys doing that as a first, like again, first exercise or Mm -hmm. whatever, or doing it as finisher. And their main goal is to build their triceps. And it's like, well, there's so many other moves that you could be doing if you want to build your triceps in some odd, weird angle that you're doing. But there's also something to be said about, you know, your your joints are going to be in weird angles and positions in life. And, to and the have, gains you get are very specific. Right. And to have strength in those weird, awkward positions could benefit you or and potentially protect you. So finding ways to incorporate that occasionally, there is some value to that. There so. is. And it's in uh, from a biomechanics standpoint, like if you take a reverse grip on a tricep press down, and you're doing tricep press down. So my palms are up, right? My palms are supinated. My the whether or not my wrist is supinated or my hand is supinated doesn't affect the action of the tricep. However, where I can see potential value, and by the way, this doesn't apply, this applies to a small percentage of people uh, who are out there. But since we're talking about the whole like, you know, what's what are we talking about? Like breaking rules, right? Yeah, right. I feel like this should be this episode should be titled like every you know, the opposite of everything that we've said and how how we still would use that. Because yeah. there is some there's a lot of things that we've talked about that still get utilized within our own training right, right, protocol. Right. So so when you get the when you use that reverse grip, the reason why somebody who's experienced may benefit from that is less has to has less to do with the grip being supinated and more to do with the fact that when you grab a bar with a supinated grip and then you press down, you're not able to hold on to a lot of weight and you have to slow down because your wrist is not strong in, in, in that position like it would be when your hand is facing down. So really what's end up happening is it forces your elbows in and it slows down the fucking reps and so people feel it more. Same, re- same thing why people will grab a cable. You ever seen this? People will do a tricep exercise and not even use a handle. Right. They'll just grab the cable itself and do a tricep extension. Now, why why do people find potential benefit in that? Well, it slows you down. Like mm. you're not able to drive through and press the weight super hard when you've got a grip on a cable or the end of the cable. It's forcing you to slow down and concentrate and you know improve upon your technique. And I think that's where a lot of this comes from is changing your grip or changing the angle. Many times, just forces you to go light and to slow down because you're not you're not used to that particular. Now, can you do that without changing your grip and the handle? Yes, but sometimes we have to be forced a little bit to be reminded uh, to slow down. In which case, you know, there's your and then there there here's another one. Mm. Here's another one that just popped in my head. Control. Okay, we we'll always say control the weight, have good controlled reps. Yes, for the most part. But is there any validity to going a little loose with your reps? No, I, I think I think uh, cheat reps are a valid tool to be used. But I also think that just for pure breakdown, there there is there's a there's a place where you need to be. And this is I've I have taught clients, especially my clients that are well trained or been lifting for a long time on how to do a cheat rep. Like there there is some value to being able to do that, but also being able to control the rest of your body to maintain good neutral spine and good core right. engagement while you do a movement like that. There there is some value to that. But would I ever teach the average person? Is it that important that it needs to be in your routine? No, absolutely not. But can it be used as a tool? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah. Well I feel the same I mean on that on that topic about like plyometrics and using like really explosive movement and like, because it's so, it's so unique. Like it's, if I use that before I was going to go into a squat, like we talk about paps, but like the way that we would do it as Mm -hmm. far as like using, you know, these explosive moves to really like heighten the central nervous system and give you that max output. So I'm, I'm bringing that energy and connectivity into the actual like compound lift um, that's a great technique, but it's very advanced. So it's not something I'd bring up a whole lot, but it's, it's something I do use with athletes to get them to hyper respond, uh, with heavyweight. Well, it's, it has less to do with the form and more to do with the explosive nature 
of the form. Mm. And the problem with speed with your reps is that people don't typically have the control. Right. This is right. what makes the so limit has to be there first. Yeah. So, you know, someone is experienced like I know Adam and Justin can can do a fast explosive barbell squat or bench press or a cheat curl or a cheat lateral for their shoulders. And I know that they're going to have control over that speed where they're not going to hurt themselves. And there may yield the benefit of that that because fast contractions Applying force or speed to your force does activate fast twitch muscle fibers more so than anything. Mm -hmm. This is why there's a lot of benefit to as however technical Olympic lifts are. Do you want to talk about a muscle building benefit? If yeah, you you'll can, see growth. Look, I'll tell you what, my tra my traps, I've worked them out forever, hard to get them to respond. You know, snatch grip high pulls, mm -hmm. just blowing them up like never before. And that is not a controlled movement. I mean, it's controlled in the sense that my form is good, but the, but it's explosive and it's fast, mm -hmm. and I'm throwing the weight up, and you know that application of that that kind of technique to, you know, just hypertrophy training, being I mean, able to generate way more force into the lift, and that a lot of times that's what creates the the speed and the momentum, the acceleration that uh, you know you transfer to the bar, or you transfer to the ground, and create those ground forces. But yeah, it's a totally different mindset instead of like like controlled strength it's well, actually hard to teach that's a good example too with like the traps because the traps are such a small muscle that if you tried to isolate the traps to develop them there's only so much weight that you can either mm. you can shrug or lift with them where you do something more explosively like that where you use momentum and, and they're and they're primarily there for a stabilization muscle right yeah. that's primarily what the traps are utilized for so when you do something explosive and they have to stabilize, you can do something much heavier than doing like these little isolation type of trap movements that you're trying to do. So there's a lot of benefit to that. That's that what that's what blew my shoulders and my traps up was doing high pulls. And I used to just do like a snatch to an overhead press. And that was like a, those were staple movements when I was competing to help develop my Yeah, my that's a good point traps. because you can you can modify Olympic lifts to make them the, the potential safer if for hypertrophy like there's no reason to do a a, a, a total a, a full clean right mm -hmm. if you're trying to build i mean you, you're going to get benefit from it but let's be honest it's very technical mm -hmm. but you could do a hang clean yeah, that's exactly what i do yeah, hang yeah. clean to a press yeah hang cleans are, are easy to learn still require there's still a learning curve so if you're listening you've never done it yeah. start with no weight um and, and get the same benefits and really that's that's where you need to start anyway to really master that the the first part of that movement is the most essential anyway to to master uh, and then the rest of it is just how do I manipulate my body and move mm -hmm. it in a way that I'm loose, but then I can get into position quickly. Mm -hmm. I remember, too, one rule that I thought was, which we've talked about many times, is not really a rule. But for a long time, I thought it was a bad idea. Everybody said never train a sore muscle. Remember that? Yeah. Like training a sore muscle, you'll impede its recovery. You'll prevent the muscle from you know building or whatever. Just let it rest. Let it recover. In fact, I would tell my clients. You know, they'd come in and be like, oh, you're still sore here. Okay, we're going to avoid that area because it's still sore. Well, that's I, not true at all. Well, I broke that rule today. Today, So I'm my legs are pretty sore um, from yesterday. And I went on the three-mile hike or walk this morning, early this morning. And yeah, every mile or so, I would do walking lun body weight lunges. I would have never done that in the past. If I was really sore, the way my mind worked before is like, it needs to recover, don't train it anymore, mm -hmm. let it rest, feed it, that type of deal. Mm -hmm. Where now it's like, if I'm really, really sore and I know I overextended myself a bit, that doesn't mean I won't still train that muscle. It just means now I'm going to do things that are going to take it through its full range of motion and maybe do some kin stretch type of stuff. So really just promote more blood flow, oxygen getting there. It's only going to facilitate and speed up recovery. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep. And that, that's the biggest thing that I noticed from it is in, you know, part of the creation of trigger sessions was discovering just that. Like if I get a pump in a muscle that's sore, it recovers faster and it's almost like a turbo to yeah. how it builds and adapts. And that was the fuel behind, you know, figuring out that frequency could really be applied if you manipulate intensity, you know, in the right way, you know, so. Do you think there's any value to doing that, like right after or, or you know, fairly after or I mean, sh fairly shortly after you eat? Like if you, something that we used to do, and this is a total, this is total bro oh, science. Oh, I there's, know what you're going to say. This is total bro science right here. To force the glycogen to muscle. Yes. Mm. And I, you know. And how long after eating? What, you'd eat carbs and then wait. Well, like when I was competing, you got to think too, I, being, I would, this is like me getting closer to stage time. 
and I'm living in a, in a deficit. And then when I would eat, I could just feel my body like absorb it pretty fast. So it would be about 30 minutes or so post a meal and I would do trigger workouts. And man, that I just, it made me feel amazing. Now, is it the pump? Is it that I was depleted? There's so many variables like that and so much, so but many But the theory unknowns. is that, that you, you fill your body, you eat carbs, and then the goal is to drive those carbs to your muscles right. by doing a light workout versus where your body may turn it, store it, turn it into body fat. And I can see the, I can see the rationale behind it. Right. I don't know if that necessarily works or if you're just burning off some of the glycogen so you don't store as much body fat. Maybe right. that's the case. But there is something to be said about going into a workout uh, hydrated and then having carbohydrates in terms of the pump. Anecdotally speaking, I notice it. You know, I notice a big difference huge as well. Huge difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge, so, huge difference. Absolutely. That's one of the things that I had to get used to when we went when I went on this high fat, low carbohydrate diet is my pumps are just nowhere near what they used to be. And again, that's what makes me wonder too, that how much of the, you know, carbohydrate intake that I'm doing right now is literally related to maybe hormonal like increases, mm -hmm. or is it more the psychological piece because I tend to get these pump, a better pump again, mm -hmm. because I'm shuttling more carbohydrates in there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is, a lot of this stuff is is you know we uh, aren't a hundred percent certain exactly, or I'm not a hundred percent certain on you know if it is more psychological or is it actually something uh, physical that's happening. You know, it's one of those things in, with resistance training where it's been observed by so many people, and so many people say, "Yeah, I feel it this way," or "This is how it works," and many times they're proven false. But sometimes this stuff that comes out, and they're like, "Oh, it looks like there was some wisdom in in what we've been saying," you know, for so long that you know science starts to support it. That would be an interesting one to figure out because I def I noticed that as well. I've, I've done that as well where I'll eat carbohydrates and then an hour after, especially if I'm hydrated, I'll work out right. and it's like, I get this really intense. You I'm know. actually enjoying playing this devil's advocate that we're doing right now because there is a lot of things that... Oh, know. here's a good one. I'll give you a great one. Uh, if you do cardio, it will take away from muscle gains. Mm. Uh, not if, if your activity consists of only weights and you're super inactive all day. Because mm. I remember that was, my, that was me. That was my MO. Lift weights, never do any other activity because I thought I had to conserve calories. I thought I had to, you know, didn't want to burn anything. And then I started incorporating like walks, like 30-minute walks post-workout or whatever. And I think it's just the improvement in my health that contributed to more muscle gains. And I actually would do posts about it yeah. and say, hey, cardio, if, if it improves your health and you've got shitty cardiovascular health, may actually contribute to a, well, and a also better the state. Stimu like stimulating my muscles in a different way when I would sprint or I would do explosive movement as, in terms of cardio, like running hills and things like that, like and mm -hmm. do bursts. I know a significant difference in my legs and my legs would just blow up, you know, and then I would bring that back into, you know, the next phase where I would get back into squatting heavy and mm -hmm. deadlifting and um, just that, that change of stimulus and, and the, the focus of, of power and that fast twitch movement was really substantial. And, and, and we haven't really, you know, harped in on that yet as far as our programming. Is well, concerned. staying on the cardio train here, something that I do that's, you know, contradicts what we understand and know about the science behind it now is fasted cardio. And fasted cardio, we know now that when compared head to head with fed cardio later on the afternoon or whatever, it's it's pretty damn close to what they eat. They burn as yeah, far as fat. Matter, right? right, doesn't really matter. But what I have found is, and why it, it's something that I still utilize as a tool, is that I wouldn't get up at six o'clock in the morning to do cardio unless I had this plan to get up and go do fasted cardio mm -hmm. at first thing in the morning. And the fact that I'm fasted, I don't need to push myself that hard. I don't have a bunch of glycogen stored up that my body needs to burn off. So I'm pretty much in a fat burning state the moment I get on there and I start walking or moving. So it allows me to kind of just walk for a nice hour, take an easy stroll. I can I can think, I can work, I can do what it meditate while I'm walking. It's such a it's such a useful tool for me. And because the bros had pressed it so hard and then the backlash on the bro, and I know Lane was part of this movement on the other side of talking shit about, you know, fasted cardio. And I think it's because of how the bros had explained it for so long, but there's some value to it. And I've, I have found a lot of value in 
And it, and really what it is, it's the getting up earlier. It's that I'm up earlier and I'm moving for an extra hour that I wouldn't be before. And it just starts my day off really, really well. And I notice a huge difference. And that's something that, you know, we've talked about before that, you know, oh yeah, it doesn't, there's no real value to doing fasted cardio mm-hmm. and it's silly to do that. But there's something to be said about training yourself to get up extra early and go move you know, period, whether you're fed or not fed. And mm. the way I look at it is it's not really hard for me to not feed myself before I go walk mm. for an hour. So yeah. another one is, uh, what do we hear? Post-workout, don't eat carb, uh, don't eat fat, right? Post-workout, because you need to speed up the assimilation oh, of the right. carbohydrates and proteins. And there's a lot of myth behind that too, because you, you still will replenish things if you eat later on. But one of the best things I think you can eat post-workout if you're really looking to replenish quickly and recover quickly, it's it's cholesterol, dietary cholesterol, and it typically comes with uh, a lot of fat. Mm-hmm. And try eating, look, I tell you what, try having like six egg yolks post-workout with your post-workout meal and watch what happens. Your muscles suck up cholesterol at a very high rate. In fact, your your if they were to test your blood cholesterol right after an intense workout, it's much lower. And it's because your body's utilizing that cholesterol for repair purposes. So it makes sense to consume dietary cholesterol, just like it would make sense to consume dietary glycogen to replenish or dietary carbohydrates to replenish glycogen, try dietary cholesterol, but they always say like avoid the fat. So people instead would have egg whites. Nah, man, throw some fat in there, throw some, some yolks and watch what happens. It's if, if I'm going to eat anything post-workout, it's that right there. Yeah, right, and right. that's the thing that I'll notice. Right. Absolutely. Another one could be, you know, we've talked about, and I know I've probably been, I remember early on when we talked about the training every single day in the gym. I think there's value to that. I think there's something, I think most people struggle with consistency and scheduling time for themselves Mm -hmm. to exercise. I think it's just applied improperly. I think that, you know, a a lot of people that go, go from zero to balls to the wall. and, And that's who we speak to when we talk about, you know, doing a full body routine three days a week will probably be superior for 90% of the people out there listening. But if you're somebody who's been consistent and you're not a beginner and you've been training for a really long time, there's, there's, I've found a lot of value in having a time that is always my gym time, six, seven days a week. And based off of how I've been training, how I've been eating, I would manipulate Mm -hmm. uh, the intensity of that. Yeah, there's always something you can do. It's just a matter of scaling down that intensity and, you know, going through the movements and the skill of whatever you're, you know, if it's a lift that you want to improve, you can definitely like do that with like light load and have massive benefit from that. It is. And it, I, you know, there's something I've been pondering too, is I wonder, you know, back in the day, in the olden days, uh, bodybuilders and strength athletes used to take literal time off from the gym every year. Like they'd take a month off or weeks off oh, right. of nothing at all. And I wonder if that's got any benefit. I, we I wonder to, if it's a, if it's a smart thing to my do. My buddies that. and I used to schedule hmm. a week off completely. A week off. It was like a something that we did. It was about, it was about 10, I should say it was more like two weeks, like 10 to 14 days where we would take zero weights and it was it was scheduled that mm. you know in the middle and i would do it after we've been training pretty hard and consistent for three or four months straight take it off i found value in it i see i, I wonder if it like reese because your body you know sure it, it starts to adapt to the point where it doesn't want to respond anymore because you do it so often well and i think we tend to always continue like to, fasting from exercise i still and i think we still all continue to flirt with that that fine line of i mean because to make those gains, right? To adapt, we have to stretch our bodies, our body's abilities, right? So as you as you do this for a long, long time, you tend to stretch stretch yourself more than you are pulling back, right? So I think there's more value to somebody who's constantly stretching themselves than somebody who never stretches themselves. So I think it would be very unique to each individual. If you're somebody oh, yeah. who finds themselves sore quite frequently, you know, through the week and you're always kind of flirting with that mm-hmm. line because mm-hmm. you like to train hard and you got serious goals and you're pushing yourself, then I could really see a lot of that. In fact, I remember I remember the first time I ever gave a client a scheduled week off of training. And I remember telling her because she was the first time, it was the first time I had ever did that because I felt she needed it. I was like, man, I've never had a client this consistent 
train this hard right. for this long. I've done that with some of my athletes. And I, me- and I remember telling her, like, hey, you know, I, I know you're not going to want to do this, but I want you to take a week off. Like, just yeah. I think it'd be good for your body. It's We've been hitting it pretty hard for a long time. She was in her mid-40s, and I thought, you know, this would be really good for her. Other than that, most clients struggle with consistency. Yeah, it's not common. Just getting in. Yeah, yeah like it's, it's not. It's, more tough. Right. I'm, I, and I think athletes or somebody who is like a serious lifter, yeah. I could see lots of Even Arnold to used to do it. Yeah. There's pictures of him that Which are hard to find. Which I think he falls under the serious well, lifter yeah. category. Yeah, but, but yeah, there's, there's hard- <laughs> Just a little bit. There's hard, they're hard to find, but there's pictures of Arnold that when he would be off season and he would look downright small compared to how he would compete. And then leading into a contest, many times he would gain weight walking into the contest where you actually start to put on muscle. Kevin Lavroni, I believe, used to do that as I well. Did, I did that I, when I got, well, of course, I increased my anabolic, right? So I in, increased my testosterone going into my pro show, mm-hmm. but I gained into those shows. Did you? Yeah, yeah, I, came, I gained it. I mean, I, I hit USA's stage, okay? This was only two months, two or three months before. I, I went pro at USA's 201. I hit uh, Ferrigno's in November, so it's July, August, November. So July is when USA's is. Ferrigno Pro Show debut was in November. I hit stage at 215. Oh, so you put on almost 15 pounds and you were still shredded. Yeah. Wow. So I grew I grew into that, grew into that show. That was and the best you, I you ever. You said that was a difference of, of how much, like what in gear or training? Yeah, yeah. So I was at I was at 250 to 300 milligrams. I can't remember. I was right around there. So let's just say I was at 300 and then I, was, I pressed up to, to 500 when I went pro. So that was the difference of two hundred more. You went. Uh, you went. You didn't go pro at Ferrigno. It was at the USA's. USA's is where you go pro. That's that, where you were two hundred one. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. Mm-hmm. And then you said they told you you were too big. So I was too big before that. So my amateur show, there was a, my second amateur show. I came in at I hit stage at two hundred fifteen, and they told me um, I was I was too big, and so that's where I like was. And I remember then. I think that was when I went to three hundred. Then I pulled it back down to two fifty. Plus, I was training not to get any bigger because they had told me that. So I was kind of I was leaning mm-hmm. out, trying to be leaner, uh, coming into a show. Then that's that. I think it was two shows later when I went pro because then I won my first first place mm-hmm. show after that, and then I went to uh, USA's. But then when I once I went to pro, they they were like all the pros were big, real big. So I was like, okay, I can. I, now I you can, can push it. Yeah, I can push. I'm it. excited. I can't wait for you to 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 follow map split. I know you're training yourself. Yeah, I'm more red there. right now. Somebody was asking, why aren't you following split? And it's like so funny because. I mean, here's the thing. This is why it's, we... It's a lot of volume. to ramp it up. Yeah, there's no reason for me to fall a split. Like, it's just, I'm not there. I'm not... I'm it wouldn't no, work. I'm nowhere near... I mean, yes, it would work. It would work. I would see results. Could I Could I do it? Yeah, absolutely, I could do yeah, it. Yeah, but, but the I, way you're doing it is more appropriate and better. Well, yeah, it's more beneficial. I'm yeah. going to see more results consistently by, you know, applying the appropriate amount of intensity and volume to my body. I mm-hmm. went from being sedentary, I mean, to where I'm stepping less than 5,000 steps a day day not training at all to okay three days a week Mm -hmm. like there's no i have no business training a six to seven week seven day Mm -hmm. a week protocol with high volume on top of that like i first need to work up just a training four or five days a week Mm -hmm. consistently first and then i'll start to increase the volume then i'll go to six and then i'll increase the volume again which means easily it'll be three four months before i even get to split you know Mm -hmm. i can't wait till you guys try because i'm I'm, now i'm in week like three or four or something like that and it's Fucking great! It's a great program. Yeah. Well, it's it's you know you know what it's I'm funny really- when we wrote this one. I and I, I, when we wrote black, I was like, oh, this is just like how when I was a, a competitor, and you've probably heard me again go, oh, split. This is like when I was a competitor, but this really is the when when we started. Red was when I before I started competing, and when I, when you and I first kind of met, we're talking, and I started following that, and then black was when I first r- did my first show. Split is kind of like the national level or so, mm-hmm. and I even moved to even greater volume than yeah. split. You know, so it's the kind of natural progression. What of I like, how I train. what I really like about it is the second body part workout of the week is the unilateral stuff that we threw yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I forgot all about that, but I I've been doing it, and uh, I mean, it's perfect. It's perfect because you already had a hard workout earlier in the week. When you go unilateral, you can't push the weight like you normally can. Mm-hmm. But it's the control and technique that you have to focus on because mm-hmm. it's unilateral you know, stuff and pausing with the dumbbells yeah, it forces like, you to slow down. Yeah, dude. And so, I mean, I'm getting, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I really, really enjoy it. And it, it reminds me of how you're important. getting jack. You're 200 right now. You said right. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what I'm really happy. What it reminds me is that it's even I, even as much as I know and all this stuff, and I know my body, it helps to follow a pre-written routine sometimes because mm-hmm. 
I can still fool myself and get caught up in some old shit. Sure. So I look at the program like, oh, I want to do this over here, but the program says this. I'm going to follow the program because I know when we wrote it, I was in the right state of mind. I wasn't in the middle of a workout mm-hmm. trying to you know, go do my favorite thing. Right, right. And it's been, it's been working out. Well, something else, another well. rule that we kind of broke inside of Map Split or something that we talked about before that we utilize in here is we use uh, drop sets and AMRAP. AMRAP. Like we do some stuff like that. Yep. That's, you know, and, and the idea of the programs, which is what really excites me, is that we are now at a place where we're starting to incorporate some of these techniques that we kind of talk shit about early on. And the reason why we talk shit about them is because the majority of people just, it shouldn't be a focus of yours. If you're, if you haven't followed a, a, a consistent routine for even one year of your life before, like getting into AMRAP, drop setting, pyramid setting, like bands, chains, all this crazy stuff, like little to no value. Like there's so much work to be done in the on, in the meat of your mm-hmm. your your programming and your nutrition and things like that that should be where most of your focus should be. Now, if you're somebody who's been training for years and you've been consistent, like, okay, like how would I program some of these types of tools or tips? Like this is an example mm-hmm. and you get that in split, which is pretty cool. Dude, you know what's been, you know what's pretty impressive? I'm, is we were, I was going through, um, you know, Jessica and I were going through so like how she started when she started working out with me and how her body's changed. And she had some old records of where she was at. She weighed 135 to 137 when she first started and her body fat was in the low 20s. She's now between 119 to 120 and her body fat is in the mid to high teens, like 16, 17%. That is a huge difference in lean body mass and fat. If you if you look at that, oh yeah, I mean in in that period of time, and her metabolism went from twelve hundred calories where she ate anything over that, she would gain weight to now she's over twenty one, twenty two hundred calories. That's crazy. That's a huge difference. Yeah. in a relatively short period of time, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I love seeing that because it just reminds me how how impactful you know uh, manipulating your training and nutrition can be on just changing. Your body, just changing how your body reacts to food and how well, it does Well, that's things. where we saw the biggest deficit was everybody's focused on supplements. Everybody's focused mm-hmm. on like all these other like factors. And, and for some reason, we got away from the programming side of it and like actually doing something consistently. Well, that's because most of these motherfuckers selling shit weren't personal trainers for a long time. Like, no. you, when you've Like when you've trained thousands of people, it's one thing if you're a guy or a girl who has got yourself into incredible shape. You know, that that's respect like that takes discipline, hard work and consistency for sure to mm-hmm. accomplish that. And I'm not taking any credit from that. But there is a fucking huge difference between that person and the person who has trained hundreds, potentially thousands of people. That's a and, massive difference. And seen all the variables and seen what a majority of people where their inconsistencies mm-hmm. are and what will really make the big difference when speaking to like what types of so, the knobs to turn. So yeah. yeah, so when you see these people on like Instagram and social media that are posting about different supplements and getting into these debates about how branch chain amino acids work, you know, this this latest <laughs> yeah. study arguing says, about the most like minute detail bullshit right. that you even need to focus on. Yeah, the, the time release of it and this yeah. one's better yeah, than that yeah. one. It's like, dude, are you kidding me? Like are you even are you even applying frequency and intensity correctly? It are you pales in comparison. phasing yeah. your programs out the right way? Are you doing any of these other are you even doing the movements that are gonna be like the biggest How about thing? are you even healthy? Yeah. Like why are you throwing know, all this dude, you know what I mean? I know. Like I Healthy body is gonna re, is gonna adapt better and more efficiently Dude, just than a healthy body. You're walking around all inflamed and bloated and all this, and you're trying to lose weight on top of it. It's just like you never even like understood that like what I'm eating is like I, super inflammatory. I just, I just got a message from a young lady. She's like, "Hey, you know, after real intense workouts, I get really, really bloated." So I'm like, "Okay, well, how soon after your workout are you eating?" She's like, "Oh, right after." So I'm like, "Okay." Why don't you wait a few hours because you're probably inflamed from your workout and see if you can eat and then you know we'll identify it's a food intolerance or whatever. And so her response is, well, then I'll just have a protein shake. That way it's easier to digest. And it's like, no, no that's- <laughs> you're missing the whole, you know, uh, what I mean? processed, the whole, yeah, Ugh. the whole point. You know what I mean? You're missing the whole point. So yeah. anyway, yeah. look, we have a bunch of free guides available. They're free. They're very informative. We have a guide to teach you how to do hit training properly, how to build your legs, your build your chest, arms, your abs. Uh, there's like 12 guides. They're absolutely free. Go to mindpumpfree.com. Yeah. Download them now. Also, you can find us on Instagram. 
You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and yours truly at Mind Pump South. Go add me. I want to be your friend. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.